So here we go with the final one. Question five, the vector question. The two lines there given have equations um, written in column vector form. Show that the lines are skew. As soon as they tell us that we need to show that the lines are skew, that means we know we're looking for a contradiction. Um, we set up our system of simultaneous equations. We're going to say that if they intersect, then all of these equations are true at the same time. 4 plus 3s is equal to 1. From the top line, from the i coordinates, the i components, the j components, 6 plus 2s equals t. And the k components, 4 plus s is... So to be sure that they're not parallel um, well, this is an interesting one. We, I think we probably should, shouldn't we? We, uh, we are told that they're skew. We've, we've got to show that they're skew. I guess we ought to rule out parallel. How would we show that they're parallel? Not parallel. Um, if one's, if they're like proportional to directions. If, um, so let's, let's put that in first. If we can show here, that what it's, it, we just need to show that 3, 2, 1 is not equal to some constant times 0, 1, minus 1. That's it, isn't it? If it was equal to some constant times that 1, they would be parallel. So by showing that, we've shown that they're not parallel. It's, it's actually, you're right, it's worth doing that, just to get that out of the way first because that's ruled out one of the possibilities. We're now considering what would happen if they were intersecting. If they were intersecting, there would be a solution to all three simultaneous equations. Um, this first equation, that implies that, um, what would you get, s equals minus one into that? Okay. If we now, if we look in the second equation, if s equals minus 1, we get 6 minus 2 is t, so t equals 4. So the first two equations we've got, s is minus 1, t equals 4, is solutions. That's the look at the sky seeing the two lines crossing. We've got to show that that's a contradiction in the third one. In the third equation, if s equals minus 1, we now get 4 minus 1 equals minus t. So t is negative 3. Well, we found that t was 4 earlier. That's a contradiction. And that's enough to show that the lines are skewed. Finding that contradiction. If they'd intersected, what would have happened here? What would, what would you have got out of this? We would have got t equals 4, which would have gone along with that one, and that would have shown that they intersected at the point where t is 4. Point, uh, part 2. Find the acute angle between the two lines. This is what we talked about, the dot product then. Part two. Um, actually, it might be easy for us to take the thing that we've learned about the dot product, which is that, and rewrite that expression. So it says that cos theta is a dot b over the modulus of a times the modulus of b, mention of a, mention of b. So that would be cos theta in our case is, what were the lines? 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, over, over that. So we can work this out to get the cosine of theta. Um, what's this? 3 times 0 is 0, 2 times 1, 1 times minus 1, 
what we end up with there? One. We just end up with one on the top, don't we? On the bottom, we've got the square root of 9. Uh, we'll start with root 14. And that one is root 2. If we take that to the calculator, inverse cos of 1 over root 14, root 2, we get, I've done it in degrees, we get 79.1 degrees. It did, in this case, give us an acute angle straight away, so, so that's our acute angle. I think that's going well. Point, uh, part three, the point A, the point A lies on L1, and OA is perpendicular to L1, when I was the origin, find the position vector of A. We've got, there's the line L1, however it looks on the line, it is a, it is a straight line, it's just the other curvature of the earth that's affecting that as we look at it. And we've got the origin and we're told that this line from the origin to that point meets it at a right angle. <coughs> and the wire drawn A is such a straight angle. But there we go. Um, so we need, if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, we need the directions of these two lines, don't we? Again, this is a pretty standard last part of a vector's question about finding the position of this, uh, of this point. What do we know about A? Well, we know it's on the line L1, so we could write the point A. Write its position vector as being, if it's on the line L1, then it could be written as being 4 plus 3s. 6 plus 2s and 4 plus s. That's just taking the line L1 as it was given to us there and, and putting in, taking a particular point on the line as the point A. There it is. I don't know what s is yet. Um, the direction of that line, the direction of L1 is given by 3, 2, 1. That's, that's the direction vector of that. And these two lines, that line, 3, 2, 1, and that line, are perpendicular. If two lines are perpendicular, what happens to their scalar product? Yeah. It's zero. Zero because the cos of 90 is zero, and so the product of their magnitudes times zero would give us zero. So we're saying that 3, 2, 1, the dot product of that and this vector gives a result of 0. If that's true, all we need to do is work this out. It's going to give us a nice linear equation in terms of s. It's going to give us 3 lots of 4 plus 3s, plus 2 lots of 6 plus 2s plus one lot of four plus s is zero. We're going to be careful we don't make any daft numerical mistakes in this, are we? I'm going to go really carefully. And um, what have I got on together? 12, 12 and 4 is 28. Um, and then 14. S. Oh, isn't that nice? So we've got S as being minus 2. And we're not finished. The question said, find the position vector of A. So, the position vector of A is if we put minus 2 into this original version of OA that we had, 4, take away 6, 6 um, minus 4, 
and 4 minus 2, we get minus 2, 2, 2. There we are. Fantastic. <laughs>